chapter one is um, quality assessment and safety. So what's some things that um, happens like with quality assessment? What does it entail? Uh, it's like it makes sure that all your tests are accurate and the quality of everything you're doing is right. Mm -hmm. Specimen collection, storage, and handling. Yeah. Um, Properly educated and experienced laboratory laboratory personnel. Yep, all that is part of QA. So, um, you know, you have pre-analytical, analytical, and post-analytical. So um, correct sample collection would be which category? Analytical. The middle one, yeah. <laughs> Pre-analytical. 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 That's before testing. So you have to collect the specimen before you test it. So that's pre-analytical. What about um, turnaround time? Analytical. Analytical. What about column results? Post analytical. Post analytical. Mm -hmm. So pre analytical is it happens before testing. Analytical is something that happens during testing. So that would be like your turnaround time. Um, stuff like that, and then your post analytical is stuff that affects your reporting and interpreting of results. What is TAT? Turnaround time. Turnaround time. Yep. If you have a specimen in the ER and then a specimen on the floor, which one are you going to do first? ER. 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 Why? Because it's a Usually more critical. Uh, I thought you meant on the floor, like they were like dead on the floor. Mm -hmm. Like in a waiting room. No, like on the hospital room. They the hospital room. Hospital. Like, oh, I thought you meant like they fell on the floor or something, like they would be critical. Oh, uh, no. Um. How many patient identifiers? Two. 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 And what's going to accompany um, the urine in the lab? What, like, what do you need to know about that urine? Um, what kind of test they want performed on it? Mm -hmm. Time. You need to know time. Time. If it was collected correctly. Yep. You need to know all that good stuff. If it's just a routine urinalysis, then how long do you have before two hours? Two hours? What should you do after those two hours? Refrigerate. Refrigerate. What if the ER put the label on the bag instead of the cup? Is that acceptable? No, I've never seen it back. So what do you do? You get you tell them to get another sample. Okay. Document and re ask for a recollection. Yep.
what happened yeah. they collected it out of the clock and then drove around town home help drove around town and then had to go to other places and you got it at four o'clock and it's not refrigerated do you run yeah, by the way you ask for a recollection document and recollect quick question on cases like that they actually have paperwork that says when the specimen was collected or how to yes yeah, they do you should always know when your specimen was collected. Yeah. Because of that reason. There's no way that they could lie on their paperwork or something and say that it was collected at a certain time when it. Yes. Yeah. In a way, but those urine results will reflect that. So that's on them. Essentially. Okay. And we can't do nothing about it. If they lie, they lie. But What's PM? Preventative maintenance. Preventative maintenance. What is preventative maintenance? Something you perform on your instrument to make sure everything's Coming out right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep, you perform preventative maintenance basically um, to eliminate anything happening to your instrument. Um, what's considered an external quality assessment? The proficiency against proficiency testing would be considered an external quality assessment. What are critical values? Um, values that are out of range. Yeah. What do you do when you have a critical value? You re you call and report it. Yep. And call have them read back and all that stuff. Yep. So what are they actually going to do when they read back to you? Repeat. And they're going to repeat what you said. They're going and to, you document. Yep. They're going to literally read it back to you. What's PPE? Personal protective. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's some reasons why a urine may be rejected if there's poop in it if it's um if it's labeled wrong there's water in it there's water if it's not enough urine to um, test, we have to do that non-sufficient. Yep. What's one of the main reasons why? Not enough heat. No label or mislabel. 
get mislabeled. I'm not mislabeled. Either unlabeled or mislabeled. What did you just ask, Rebecca? What are some reasons why a urine specimen is rejected? Okay, the doctor called me, so I thought I missed something. Uh, and then, then like, y'all gave examples, and then I said the main one was um, either unlabeled or mislabeled. Okay. Usually the main one. So we were talking about um, a proficiency survey is an external quality assessment. What is a proficiency survey? It's where they send you the um, like questions and then you answer them and you send it back and it's like all the surrounding counties basically. Sorry. Maybe. What kind of questions do they send you? Well, they send you samples of the control and all that, and they already know what it's supposed to be, and you got to get it within the ranges that it's supposed to be. Yeah, they send you samples. They send you samples that you have to run with the other patients, run it as if it is a patient, and you um, document the results yeah. and send it back into them. Yeah, and I compare it with everybody else, like um, Jahayla was saying. Yeah. And if you get it wrong, you basically can't work in that department anymore and they can shut the whole department wrong if everybody gets, I mean, down if everybody gets it wrong. Yep. <clears throat> no more pressure there. What do you do um, if you have a blood smell? Blood spill. Bleach. You soak it up first with paper towels and then use a one to 10 solution of bleach. How many parts bleach to parts water? One bleach, not bleach, nine water. Yep. What is a procedure manual? It's got all your procedures in there, like the um, instructions. Everything that's on the insert goes in that manual. Yeah. yeah. What's the purpose of it? So you know how to do the test you're performing. Yep. So you know how to do it. You know what um, may react with it. Like everything about it. Does it require a certain temperature? All that good stuff. What is um, universal precaution? Free blood and Hold on. It's, you treat blood. all bodily fluids as potentially blood and all other bodily fluids as potentially infectious. Yeah. Who oversees safety? OSHA. OSHA. What's infectious like? Biohazard. What's the safety data sheet? It tells you what about the chemical that you're using, what to do if it spills or anything of that nature. Yep, Any anything about a chemical is in there. Each chemical you use. Should 
Should all employees know where it's located? Yes. Okay. What's the purpose of quality control? To make sure things are running properly. Yeah. Where's quality control at? In here. I don't think it is. I think this is mainly like quality assessment. Okay, well, what did she say about quality control? It's just basically um, testing. Ensure the quality of your test results. Okay. It talks a little bit about it on page six, Jahayla. Okay, thank you. What is she talking about? You can camera on and mute it. Chapter 18. What's the main microscope that we use? Right field. Right field. What's the ocular? The eyepiece. eyepiece. The eyepiece. Make sure um, you know the different parts of the microscope. I know we've already went over it one time, but you'll need to know it. So if you, um, in order to get the total magnification, what do you do? Ocular times objective. Yep. So if you put it on full immersion, what's your total magnification? 100 times 10, 1,000? Yep. 1,000. Yeah. Did you get your 100 for the eyepiece? I mean, for the um, objective or nose piece, and then 10 for the eyepiece. And if you multiply those together, that's 1,000. So 
So what, where does the 10 come into play? Uh, the author, like you're saying, the old immersion is 100, but where's the 10 coming from? The IP. Your, your IP is always 10. So no matter which one you're on, it's always going to be 10? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, your eyepiece that you're actually looking into is 10. And then to determine the total, you would change your objective. So say you're on the um, high-powered lens, which is what? 40. 40. So what would be your total magnification? 400. Yep. What's the inner pupillary disc? Distance between the eye uh, distance between the eye yeah. And you can change that inner pupillary distance by just sliding the eyepiece apart or together. What does the stage do? Holds the slide. What's that mean um, when the object that you're studying, if you change the objective, it'll stay in focus regardless of that? Um. Course focus? Huh? Is it course? Or focal? Or focal. So par focal is when you're looking at something, you start on low power and then you just change it to high power and then it'll stay in focus. You just have to fine tune it a little bit. That's par focal. On page 365. Yeah. What should you do when the microscope is not in use? You should clean it and put it away. Yep. Or either put a what on it? Cover. Uh, that cover thing. Yep. What's it called? Just a cover. Oh. Okay. How do you convert a bright field microscope to a phase contrast microscope? It's to do with the condenser. Yep. And what else? The objective. Yep. You change the condenser and the objective. What's phase contrast microscopes for? When you have like, like, like a waxy cast because you can't see it because it's clear, mm -hmm. you can see it under that because it's like a clear on clear. Yeah, clear object and a clear fluid, you can see it better. What do you use polarizing microscopes for? Crystals. 
Chris school? As far as body fluids, like what's one of the main things you do a crystal analysis on? Synovial If the crystal is by fringe, what colors do you see? Yellow and blue? Yep. Yellow and blue. What about dark field? Upper syphilis. Mm -hmm. Trepanine. It's a bright image of a dark background. What about fluorescence? What dyes. Is, yep, you use dyes. And one of the main things for that is like TV. Eighteen, like I said, make sure you know um, the parts of the microscope. What was that about? I'm sorry. What was that about the fluorescence again? They use fluorescent dyes. Okay. And TB is more like the main thing that um, you can see on it. So why do you even perform a urinalysis? Because it's um to monitor very uh it's three of them. I can't remember the two. It's an ultra filtrate of plasma. It is. So The elevate and monitor of body homeostasis and many metabolic disease processes. Yeah. So, to aid in the diagnosis of disease, you want to find out what's going on with them. To screen for disease, whether it's asymptomatic or you're symptomatic. To monitor certain diseases such as like kidney failure and stuff like that. And to monitor therapy. Is your antibiotic working? What are the three types of urine specimens? Morning, random, and time. Mm -hmm. So, what happens with a first morning urine system? It's the most concentrated. It is. So what test would you do on a first morning urine? Pregnancy. Urine pregnancy. Yeah. Um, but it is the most concentrated. But what do they do? How, how is it collected? You just pee in the cup when you get up. When you get up. So it's first morning.
with a random urine specimen. Can be collected any time. Um, it's it's routine. routine. Yep. It's just routine. Can be collected at any time. What about a timed collection? You have the. Yeah. Yep. yep. How do they collect the time urine system? Um, for the first urine and then start collecting after that. And the next morning when you get up, you put that one in there also. As a tech, what do you do before you shake it up? Measure the of uh, the MLs. Oh, I was gonna say make sure to leave close. <laughs> well, that too. But you're gonna record how many MLs it is in that container. Which collection technique would be used to eliminate um, contamination of the urine by wiping? The clean catch? Yep, midstream clean catch. And you usually want to do a midstream clean catch regardless because that's just good practice. But especially for what? Culture. Culture. What's the catheter I have? They already they insert have into your bladder. Insert into the bladder or where? Up the urethra. <laughs> Through the urethra. Through the urethra. What about a do what? No, go ahead. What about a super pubic? Through your stomach. Stomach. Yep. What's the wee bag? So you it goes on bag. the boys' wee wee. The boys' penis. Or girls, babies, babies, the pity bags. It's a pediatric collection. He said those, yeah, okay, I'm gonna see it. How many mLs of urine do you use for like a routine of your analysis? 20 to 50 in case you need to do repeats. Well, 10 to 15, but then you want to do a larger quantity if you can because of repeating. But it takes 10 to 15 mLs. That's for a year analysis? Yeah, just a routine year analysis. So if you don't have enough urine, what do you do? You put QNS. Which means what? Quantity not sufficient. Yeah. And then what? Then you ask them to recollect. Yeah. Does a 24-hour urine specimen go in the little urine cup? No. Yep. 
take a lot of cuts for a 24 hour. Mm -hmm. um, whenever you're collating a 24 hour urine, do you keep it at room temperature? No. No. Where do you keep it? In the refrigerator. Yep. Um, four on ice. What's some other preservation methods for a 24 hour urine? You keep it out a lot. There's an added added preservative that can come in some of the jugs yes so an added preservative and you can keep it at a lot but what's the most common refrigerator refrigeration where should you place a label on your cook on the cook Yep. Not on the lid, on the cup. That's right. What should you put on the label? Name, Name the bird, this is time good. of collection. Yep. And the patient's room number if they have one, but. What are some physical changes that can take place if the urine is not preserved correctly? Color, um, it can turn to ammonia. Yes, yeah, so odor. Oh, never mind, just kidding. Color, clarity, and odor. What are some chemical changes? Ammonia. Nitrate. The nitrite. pH. pH. And then it could be ammonia. You mentioned that. Glucose. Oh, it is hanging. Yeah, it is. Glucose. All right. So why why nitrite? Will bacteria. That, bacteria. Will it increase or decrease? Increase. Increase. Um, so what about bilirubin? Decrease. It'll what? D decrease. Decrease. Why? Light exposure. Light exposure. Glucose. Decrease. Decrease. Why? Bacteria. Bacteria. So like microscopic changes. Your blood cells. Decrease. Decrease because the losses. Because of the alkaline. Trichomonas. Decrease. Yep. I would be familiar with that chart. Which chart? Table 2.3. Table 2.3 on page 23. Uh, which changes take place 
and will they increase or decrease? What says C and S? refrigerate it to preserve a urine specimen, what may occur because of that refrigeration? Amorphous. Amorphous. And, phosph and phosphate. Yes, amorphous crystals. Okay. Just, just leave it. What's the specific gravity of water? One point zero zero one point zero 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 zero. Yeah. No, just three zeros. One point zero zero zero. What's higher in urine than any other body fluid? Acid. No. What analyte? Creatinine. Creatinine. Creatinine is 50 times higher in urine than any other body fluid. So higher than your blood. In normal healthy people, is glucose present in your urine? No. What about protein? No. No. You have protein usually, um, when you have high blood pressure or when you have some type of metabolic process going on. And then you have glucose in your urine when you have diabetes. And we're gonna learn a little bit more. Um, there's something called a renal threshold that there's a certain cutoff where if you have a certain amount in your blood, then it'll show up in your urine. And we'll talk about that. But in normal, healthy people, you don't have that in your urine. That's pretty much it. Just make sure that Y'all study. I'll see an hour for lunch again. Y'all are looking out this week. So an hour for lunch. Be back at one. Does anybody have any questions over this, folks? Yeah.
test nope. in here is on Monday. Because I mean, it's pretty, most of the stuff we've already been over. Okay, so we're not going to do the um the video, the YouTube video. What it says, medical lab lady. Um, it should already be on Whiteboard. Okay, I believe. Hold on. Yep, it's on um Whiteboard under week two. That's just basically YouTube videos just kind of she is an instructor um op for some program and it's just kind of gives you an example of stuff like how to outplot the 24 hour urine like whenever you mix it and then put it in the um urine cups and stuff like that and then the other one is just like different types of urine specimens just to kind of show you so you can be familiar with it anybody got any questions okay well i'll see y'all at one <laughs>